audio taped. If anyone else is either video or audio taping, please let us know. <coughs> so we will both take that as a no. So we will go to old business. Now, let me say one thing. <coughs> this is the rainstorm drainage issues. It's a continued discussion. Uh, I talked to town council earlier in the day and have been advised to step down on this issue uh, because it involves a relative. So I'm going to step down on the issue and I'm going to turn it over to, to Mr. Nardi who has information pertaining to the issue. We received the memorandum from town council. Uh, and I'll read the memorandum from council from Patricia Cantor. Spoke with Attorney Cantor, town council regarding the above matter based on the facts as presented. Culvert slash drainage pipe installation at location <coughs> referenced occurred several years ago with no impact. Private property owner modified, converted location referenced within the last few years. Based on limited information, it would appear that this is a private property matter and liability to the town would be remote. So basically, what David stated, he reached out to Patricia Cantor, our town council, and it looks like, I've researched this a little bit, I mean, I'm, I'm new to it, Mr. Labash is in here, David's recused himself from this. First Win has pretty much removed themselves from this project now, um, financially. Uh, they had stepped up at one point, and it was brought to my attention that they were willing to uh, help with the, the, the project and, and help pay for some of the repairs that were needed at that time. Um, they have since closed their financials. They're no longer willing to move towards this or, or do anything uh, regarding it. Um, Mr. Crowley installed the pipe. Um, the house was then sold with the pipe and, and it's in part of the, the plot plan there. It shows that the pipe there. The original pipe that was there when I researched this, it was actually there longer than me. I think it's been over 15 years that the original pipe went facing into the property and then the, the, the other pipe was added onto it. Personally, my opinion to this and, and reading what council stated, I think it is a, a civil matter between the homeowners and Mr. Fountain. I think Mr. Fountain needs to um, step up to the plate, so to say, or, or help out with this. Um, the pipe was added and the property was sold. I understand your concern with your leach field and the drainage that's on the back there. And if it was my property, I would have, you know, <coughs> an issue with, um, I built out here. I had an issue with a builder that uh, when I built my property and, and, and stayed on it for years after that to fix some problems. Unfortunately, first win, like I said, is not going to help out at all at this point in time. They've removed themselves. So I don't know. I don't think it's a town problem. I, I, I believe council has, has clarified that if, if we stepped in and, and tried to have our highway department do something with that, we're going to become liable for it. And I think we'd have to take the project on 100%, and they're recommending that we don't do that. So at this point in time, I would say it's probably a matter between, my opinion is it's a matter between Mr. Fountain and the homeowners. I have a question. If the town's water coming through the pipe, so how is that not a town issue? The, well, the water coming through the pipe was redirected by Mr. Fountain when he put the other pipe, attached the 18-inch pipe to the 24-inch pipe, which is now making a drain on the back of your property. So I probably can't, I probably can't answer that question. Why, being that it is town water that was draining to the initial portion of the property to start, you have anything to add that, Becky, regarding planning and conservation? <laughs> As far as the water was draining there originally, far, to the best of my knowledge, in the past they've always taken the town has all in the board of selectmen have always taken the stance that um, you know it would, that pipe was installed, even the, the original portion of it, not the extended part, but it was installed right. with the then property owner's permission. Was so, Mr. Fountain at right. that point? Right. And then he had. And it, I mean, frankly, it could have probably been in even before. Jim owned it. I don't. I don't know how far back that that first part of the pipe goes. But so I historically, the town has taken a stance that you know, unfortunately, if a home somebody purchases property, you know, so if it's our in. pipe, we can do what we want with it. So if it backs up on, so if we cap it off and it backs off to the street, it then becomes a town problem. If it's our pipe, we own it. We can do what we want. The pipe is on their property, correct? So the we can cap it, and then property. it's the town's problem. If it washes out the road, if it floods every house on Bemis Road, it's the town's problem. We can't tell them what to do. I don't think we have the right to do that. 
If you actually look at the easement, the easement was never written properly. It's not proper. So there's no granted access for the town to have any right to the pipe to maintain the pipe. So there's actually no right for the water to actually go onto the property now. Though it's on the site plan as a hand drawing, it was never documented properly. And at this time, there's damage to the property due to water flow coming from, from the town. From the town. So you have that there, right? Yes, yeah. So your opinion on the pipe and the drainage? In my opinion, as the highway surveyor for the town of Warren, it's a private property issue, which is being that the pipe group. was installed prior to your arrival too. I mean, it's Correct. been 15 years. I don't know when it was installed. At least. Um, Tom, the only, the you, only, Tom, the only you pipe, say that you put the first part of the pipe in to pass our rock wall? The only portion of the pipe, the only portion of the drainage up there, is if you look at the map that I enclosed. In tonight's um, folder is a pipe that goes from a manhole that the solar project installed to hold the electricity to the catch yes, basin on the intersection of Bemis and Little Rest Road, which is about 15 feet. Other than that, every piece of pipe up there. That's the one that goes into your parcel. That's the orange highlighted is what. When was that installed, Tom? That was installed maybe two months ago. While they were while they were trenching to put the pipe in for the solar project, <coughs> I gave them the authori authorization to put a pipe from their manhole cover to a catch basin which is about 15 feet other than that every piece of pipe on the ground up there was in the ground prior to may 4th 2010. so has that pipe done anything to cause any other additional problems to the their property now to my knowledge no has it helped me i mean has it lessened the flow i mean what is the what was the purpose of the pipe the purpose of the pipe was to drain the water out of the holding area of the manhole for the solar project. What was happening is it, it was a, it's a precast, I think it's a 15 by 20 foot by 10 foot precast basin. What was happening is that was filling up with water and the water was coming up through the manhole and freezing the road in that intersection. So to alleviate the ice problem. So if they cap their pipe, which is on their property right now, that water is not going to come out the back of their property. It's going to come back into the road and cause us huge erosion issues and other problems, correct? I mean, it's not going to go anywhere else except puddle there and. Correct. And we will do that. We will. If it's our pipe, we're going to cap it. So. Well, go ahead. John, you said it wasn't documented properly. I mean, it is on the ANR that the planning board signed. Yeah, on my closing documents, on the certificate of title, uh, every piece of paper, you know, all the exhibits, nothing shows the easement itself. Uh, the only thing that is stated is a one sentence that says, easement for drainage on the western side of the property. There's not, nothing documenting a deed or plan granting access to the town to put the water through. So that drainage, as far as I'm concerned, could be a perimeter drain. It, had, it would have nothing to do with the town's water. We so. had an easement on a prior property that, that we owned, and it was documented a different deed, a different book, a different everything. It was documented exactly what that easement was. This just says very plain verbiage. It doesn't yeah. say that there's an easement for the town. Yeah. And your water is coming through our property. And currently damaging the property. Current, yeah, damaging the property. <clears throat> Tom was up there a couple days ago and viewed the property and viewed other avenues of rerouting the water and he put some input on this as well. So what was that when you went up there, Tom, rerouting this water? How difficult is this one? Would be potentially. What are we talk? Where are we talking about rerouting the water too? Um, if you take a look at the map there again, I got. I came up with two different options. One is to 
Is this the light blue? Both of them, right. They're both of them are light blue. One of them is to come off of the... <clears throat> Bear with me here, I just want to get my bearings correct. going over to the property on their right side, which is Mr. Fountain's other property, which is one of the drawings, and the other drawings seems to be going One back. of them would be to connect the catch basin on the <coughs> southwest corner of Little Rest Road and Bemis Road, extending it about 65 feet into the intersection, installing a catch basin, and then continuing that pipe to the existing pipe uh, heading down west towards Joaquin Kojol. The other option is to extend the culvert on the south side of Bemis Road across from the Williams property, extending it down the road and exiting it onto the uh, adjacent lot to the east of the Williams property. So the first option here, I'm just curious, if the water was draining where it's pointing here, is this going to impact their property on the right side of their property? I mean, this is draining now to the back of their property. Potentially it could, yes. So it could cause another problem. It could. Okay. The other issue with the first option of continuing it down Little Rest is it's 18 inch pipe and it would be a distance of probably 2,000 feet plus long of 18 inch pipe and with significant rains in the way that the drainage has been in the past in that area it could be too much velocity for the 18 inch pipe that already exists on uh, Little Rest Road and it's going down and it's going down here which which would be the best existing option. pipe between Joaquin Kojal and Little Rest Road mm -hmm. on the south side of Little Rest Road that is existing 18 inch pipe technically it should probably be 24 if not 36 to accommodate the volume of water that would now be traveling down it all depends on how the drainage has changed now with the solar fields too. But I know when I first came on, Little Rest Road was flooding because of the amount of water that was shedding towards the drainage, as well as some corrections with the drainage pipe that I made that did help it. All right. Well, reading the memorandum from council, I mean, I don't personally, the town doesn't want to get involved with this matter. And they're recommending it being a civil matter between Mr. Fountain and the homeowner. I have a problem as a selectman, as a resident, reaching out to Mr. Fountain or even myself. I know we've spoken to Neil um, and, and about this being closed. I haven't spoken to Neil myself personally. I, don't, um, I have a pretty good relationship with him. I don't think it would hurt if I extended that to him or discussed it with him one last time to see their stance. Becky has reached out to him. Um, I, I don't want to make a decision right now, but right now it just looks like a civil matter, but I don't have a problem myself reaching out to Neil and asking Neil if there's some help there and actually speaking to Jim. I know Mr. Fountain's not here right now, but I would like to sit down with Jim and talk to him about this. Um, I, I personally think it's, if I had to lean one way or the other, I think you know the, the, the contractor put the pipe in and made, it created this problem, uh, in my opinion. And it, it looks like it would be his responsibility to have to fix this issue. I mean, he sold you the property, it's draining now, your leach field's being flooded, there's, there's a, a huge amount of water being gathered there. Uh, that pipe was modified by Mr. Fountain when they built the house. Um, so I would say the responsibility would lie with him, but I have no problem in continuing this and, and reaching out to him this week, uh, tomorrow to Mr. Fountain and to Neil again, and then reporting back to us. We do have a meeting next week, but we only have a one item. <coughs> 
agenda. So I don't know if David would want to entertain putting it on next week and, and, and bringing my findings out. Um, but I will personally reach out to Mr. Fountain and Neil again to see if there's anything else we can do before it ends up going that direction where it ends up probably you against Mr. Fountain and Civil Court. I'd just like to confirm, you know, as far as the source of the water, um, if the pipe that came from that culvert exited into the property, say 15 years ago, and this house was only built just a year ago, and that was the existing pipe onto the property. When that extension of pipe of 330 feet was added onto, who allowed that, who inspected it, and who permitted that at that time? That would have to look into because we, we were discussing that earlier, Becky, about how far back that pipe went, and it's well past 15 years. Yeah. Um, but we can we can research that, right? But and find out the information, find out when that pipe was put in. You're talking out. the extension, though. The extension of the pipe. Right. I mean, who who would have allowed to mm -hmm. have access to the town's water storm drain system to allow a connection and now create such a problem that we're in now? Right. We, we have pictures ahead. of the exact day the pipe was put in. Our neighbors across the street took pictures of everything. So. Okay. Can you bring those to the next? Yeah. Meeting, um, we can we can definitely find out when that pipe was put in. I can reach out to Neil. I can reach out to Jim myself and, and, and discuss it with them, and then report back on those three issues. And if you can bring in the pictures, um, and you know if we have better clarification as to when that pipe was put in, how long ago, it might help us backtrack to how it got to that point. Um, as far as Neil's standpoint was, you know they want to extend the pipe further an additional right. couple hundred feet. They they had no interest in. Uh, repairing the damage section now so in fact they would just extend but how long has it been since it's been damaged I mean I I, yeah. I was made aware of that maybe about two months ago when I first came to the office that they were looking at that this was a potential problem they were yeah. looking at extending the pipe was it damaged back then yes eroded yeah. that bad then yeah. so it's just they were just basically trying to do a quick fix just to stop the water to stop yeah. creating any more damage yeah. but there's already I would need to see pictures I've been to your property yeah. but I'd like to see the damage and what's been done personally myself we submitted pictures uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> the, the initial property was owned, you know, by the you know, by Jim Fountain and some other people as well. At the time, you know, as the golf course had existed, so when that pipe was installed, it was installed onto Mr. Fountain's property, exited to the back side of the property, and he still owned the property. You know, now this pipe exits to a new buyer, or new, you know, new purchaser, you know, first wind. And, you know, my concern too is I'm liable for the town's water supply exiting onto my property and damaging the solar project according to first wind. They already okay. told us if they have damage, they're coming after us. I told you that? Neil, uh, Neil, Neil did. Directly. He absolutely did. I just don't understand if it's the town's water, how is the town not, res the town's water is coming onto our property. But when I, it's going on the private, well it's going on the private property and then a yeah. private contractor added a pipe to that which mm -hmm. diverted the water to another area. So yeah. I, I don't know if it's still considered town's water, I mean the water is being dumped there but he has modified those pipes yeah. and, and, and changed the direction of the flow of the water um, on his own. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, that's leading him to be liable for that. Yeah. He's okay. made those adjustments and modifications to the pipe. He's causing these problems. As a homeowner, I would be looking at him, saying, you know what, what are you going to do? Okay. You modified it, fix it. Um, I don't think you'd have a problem winning that one either. To be honest with you, I, mean, I, I think it's a, a legitimate claim. Um, but I would still, like, like I said, if you could bring in the colored pictures, the pictures mm -hmm. you actually took, sure. um, I will call Neil, I will call Jim. Uh, we will research when the pipe was put in. Uh, and get that information. So if it's not, we're gonna have to notify them if it's gonna be next week or the week yeah. after. Yeah. She keeps taking. Time I keep off, taking so. Tuesday. I work Tuesday nights every Tuesday. So every day we have here. I don't have a problem contacting. You know, what kind of contact. Well, after you get your answers. Yeah. I mean, I can. Yeah. If they're satisfied to be contacted personally. Yeah, if you're yeah. satisfied to be contacted personally later this week, you know, in the early evening, I can give you a call at home yeah. and talk to you about some of the things that I found. We can go over it. <coughs> you know, call the office, leave your number with the runner, Becky. I would gladly return your call. Um, now, what happens if Mr. Fountain says, I wash my hands with this, it's not my problem, and then we do cap it off, and then it is a town problem? What happens then? It's probably going to become our problem. You have the right to cap it, it's your right, then your property. 
Yeah. It would then it's become our problem. Yeah, so when it washes prior, the for me, knowing that information now, and if that ends up happening that way, I want to prevent it before it happens now. You know, I, I hope it doesn't come to that, but I don't want to have the, water, the road get washed out and cause more work for the highway department and have to yeah. spend all those funds to repay the road, yeah. this, the, the drainage. It's going to cause a hell of a lot more, it excuse is. me, a lot more issues down the road. Anything you need to add, Tom? No. You know, I'll do this. Uh, it's Tuesday now. I should hear from them. Um, I will definitely contact them Wednesday, Thursday, and have something possibly by Friday or this weekend. Uh, okay. If you can leave us your number um, with, with the office, I will contact you personally. Anybody have anything you want to add to that or any questions? or No? Tom's good. Would anything it be else? possible to have one of the selectmen come and see the site? Yeah, I would volunteer. Okay. I mean, I don't. When are, you, when, when are you home? When's a good time? I actually have this. I have the next eight days off, so I could probably stop. Personally, myself, I could probably stop by tomorrow night, maybe around five or six. I have uh, obligations during the day, but I could probably come by tomorrow afternoon. So, um, if you can call tomorrow, leave your number. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Um, I can leave you my cell phone number, and then on my way back out of Wales, I can swing by and take a look at it. Okay. Um, I don't have a problem doing that. All right. Okay. All right. It'll be good to get another set of eyes on it. So. Yes, not a problem. I will do that. Yes, yeah. so I can get it from you. Yeah. All right, that's it. So we can get David back in here. Can somebody <laughs> pop their head in there? Please. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Comments and concerns, Igor, you're on. Uh, I'd just like to make a comment about the meeting of uh, 826. What happened was that uh, we had a programming er error in a computer. We had a glitch, so the meeting didn't go on as supposed to at 6:30 p.m. By the time we straightened the whole thing out and reprogrammed it, uh, we got 15 or 17 minutes, I think, missing the beginning of the meeting, which was mostly comments and concerns. Uh, we had few complaints. A uh, few people stopped me, and I apologize to them. And uh, just please understand, we try to do the best we can, and. As many of you probably know, when you something is a computer goes wrong, it takes a little bit of while to reprogram the whole thing, and we started the whole thing. We had to do it, and we did get a phone calls during the meeting, but we fixed it. That whatever was talked about that first 15 minutes or 17 minutes, we don't have a record of it, but the rest of it is on the record, and anybody wants it. DVD of the rest of the meeting, we will gladly supply them with that. But it's running right now, it should be fixed, we work on it, so we will try to minimize all those glitches and all the programming errors that come up sometimes. Computers, as everybody knows, are a little bit touchy sometimes and it's easy to make a mistake and once you put that little one dot in the wrong place, it's completely gone, something. So that's what we did, and that's what happened to us. Once again, we will try to do our best, and let's hope it doesn't happen again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Comments and concerns, does anybody wish to address the board? All right, we'll go to Forest One. Correspondence, a memo from Chief LaVoy extending an invitation to the members of the Board of Selectmen, as well as the town employees and all residents to take part in the 9-11 memorial service on Thursday, beginning at 8.45 a.m. at Station A. In addition, athletes from Quaybog will, be, will participate in the 12th annual Freedom <coughs> Run and will, es and will be escorted by the fire department from the ceremony. <coughs> Excuse me. I will try to get there if I can. I, see if I, I'll find out tomorrow yeah. if I can. I don't think I can. Uh, Spencer Bank is requesting permission to hold their 14th annual pumpkin par pumpkin carving excuse me contest on Monday, October 27, 2014, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Note the police and park department have been notified. I have no problem with that. No. Notification notification from Bay State Roads Program that Tom Boudreau, Highway Surveyor, 
has achieved the rank of Rhodes, Rhodes Scholar. Mr. Boudreau has achieved this distinction by completing numerous required courses. Sorry if I butchered your last name, Tom. Perfect. <laughs> I apologize. Correspondent, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Correspondence from resident Darlene Fisher of 36 Otis Street. She called to express her displeasure from the Board of Health in not representing her repeated calls regarding a rodent issue as well as a dumpster that appears to be the source of a problem. The Board of Health Office stated that the chairman has been notified Ms. Fisher would like the matter addressed. Could we have help from the board if they could give us some type of written update on that? And I did speak to Ken Lacey regarding that. Uh, they, he has been out there to look at that, the area. Um, he will supply us with something uh, regarding a written response to that. Correspondence from Luis Fecto, former director of Quaybog Theater Group in Warren has granted permission to the Friends of the Town Hall to use, dispose of, sell, or donate theater costumes stored in the Town Hall building. Has that been done yet? Very good. Thank you. A letter from the Warren Action Committee expressing concerns over the Board of Health holding meetings at 12 noon when residents are not available to attend. The Warren Action Committee feels that this is a disservice to the people in the town. I think it's probably already gone to Board of Health, but can we just forward another one and Again, ask for an update. Correspondence from Susan Tower, director of the West Warren Library. This letter is in response to numerous complaints that went unanswered by the library. Ms. Tower was not the director at the time and since her return has reached out to agree with the party. Okay. I don't know where that one is at. That was the one that there was something left on the screen. Yes. There's a nice small yes. One. yes. Yes. Uh, Follow-up from Chief Sturkowski in response to the Board of Selectmen's request to mitigate targets, mitigate target items as outlined in the Board of Health condemnation order. I did speak to the Chief, he's not here. Um, that list that we comprised uh, the last meeting, those items that we want the Chief to start to look into and start to, to uh, take care of. I sent an email to the Chief, I did speak to the Chief today. Um, some of the items on here have been looked at to an extent but not completed. What I've asked the Chief is in regards to some of these items to hire a, a, a licensed um, a pesticide company to take care of the road issue, not just put down traps. Legally within the state of Massachusetts, you have to have this, this is a requirement. You can't just go out and lay down traps and dispose of animals, uh, rodents yourself. Um, we're looking into that. He had had the, the carpet steam cleaned by a cleaner that they had rented. We, I have asked him to hire a professional cleaner to come in and do the carpets. At this point in time, we don't know if we're gonna replace those carpets or not. When I toured the building, um, when um, uh, Joe Devine, Joe Devine was with Lennart at the time. Um, they discussed that, they were taking measurements, but we're not actually sure if we're going to. I think they need to be steam cleaned. Uh, he has money to be able to, for it to be done and it should be taken care of. So a lot of these items that are on here, steam cleaning the car carpets, uh, replacing the fluorescent light covers. I'm working with a gentleman in West Springfield right now to find out if we can find those covers. Um, getting a name and, and trying to find some of these things and, and fix them. Um, so we went through this list, he is working on it. Next week I have a meeting with Ken Lacey. We're gonna go through the town hall and, and um, update the condemnation and, and see what stuff has been taken care of, what can be removed from the list and where we can go from there and, and what needs to be addressed. It's been a year since the Board of Health's been in there. Uh, the Chief is requesting to come through. I personally reached out to Ken. It will happen. We're gonna go out there, we're gonna meet, I'm gonna tour it with him and, and update those records. So <coughs> we are moving on these things. Um, you know, with the, with, the, with the formation of the committee coming up soon, uh, I think things are gonna start to move. But I have requested the Chief to utilize those maintenance funds for the purpose of fixing the building. If he exhausts those funds, I have no problem with him going to finance and then coming to us looking for money to fill the account. Uh, but utilize the funds for what it's meant to do and, and, and satisfy the needs of the residents and, and let's start fixing what we can afford to fix at this point in time. Make some progress. I think that is, <coughs> is the letter of condemnation still in effect or is that it, it's, it's not a letter of condemnation, condemnation anymore. It's a letter of what we have to fix in order. At the I, I don't think it's really condemnation anymore and I'm not quite sure how to put it. It's not a condemnation, but it's it was called that originally, but it's not. Originally down. called that, but it was downgraded because it we was. Said, you can't do that, and we had counsel no. come in. No. Correct, and that's why I requested Ken, Mr. Lacey, to come out and, and revisit the building and give us a new ordinance. Tell us what is wrong and, and how we want to label this and what we want to call it. Is it a condemnation or is it not? What will it take to get rid of those barriers in front of the building? That part I haven't addressed yet. Um, you know, I know it's a, a huge concern. It's a huge concern of mine. I would love to just see those three barriers too. gone. Um, but it's going to take money, and it's going to take Lennard, and you know, getting on top of them, which we had them in last week. You know, we've got to 
the committee, I, I think once the committee is formed, the committee has to tell us what's important to them, and, and there are eyes and ears to this, and that's why I'm in favor of this. They need to look at this and tell us what they want to do, and, and let's expend these funds the way we should be doing that. We can't do this. Um, but you rep them reporting to us will be able to facilitate this much faster. Uh, there's only so much that I can actually put into that, so the committee's going to be a great help. Uh, I, I do think it's going to be a, a definite step in the right direction to help facilitate some of the bigger problems down the road and give us recommendations. Okay. But it's typically not a condemnation order anymore. I don't, know what, I don't know what to call it at this stage. But when we brought town council in and looked at it and we had town council before the Board of Health and Board of Selectmen was there and the town council was there. It can't be condemnation because there has to be certain things to do that and we know that the, that the building inspector as far as the uh, construction of the town hall would not issue a condemnation order. Mm -hmm. We double checked with that before we brought town council in and the building inspector has been on board all the time saying that uh, the structure of the town hall is not enough to condemn it. Uh, the only thing left to the Board of Health at that point was the, was the uh, asbestos and things like that. But it would have had an order to fix rather than a condemnation. And some of these other things, like the windows and, and the, the plastic being taken down, you know, the chief makes a good point. You take the plastic down, the wintertime comes, they're running space heaters in some of these offices, but we do need to get airflow through the building. So, you know, can we find screens? What's it going to cost to put screens in these windows? Because when Lenardi came through and they looked at the windows, they had no intention to replace them. They said the windows were in great shape. They need to be worked on a little bit, but they weren't looking at replacing them. And to replace those windows, it's going to be easily $1,500 a window. Uh, we, re we just redid them in West Side and, and their windows, and they were fifteen hundred dollars a window. It's not a cheap fix. Uh, the windows are still in working condition, but they need screens. They need to be open. The ventilation needs to happen. You know, the ventilation for the bathroom. I spoke to the chief about that. You know, I'm not proposing that we drill a hole through the wall. This is a historical <laughs> building, but you can vent through a window. You can buy a, a piece of material that can vent through the window to get the airflow moving uh, out of the <coughs> room. So there's options out there. We just have to get prices on them and start to react to them. Uh, but under no circumstances are we looking to drill through the, the walls right at this point in time and, and fix that problem. But we have addressed all of them. Uh, the chief is working on them. I will be meeting with him and the Board of Health. And, you and can't go. power vent to a wall. You can power vent to a two and a half feet of wall. But it's, it's, you're venting it through the exterior of the building, which is, you're changing the, you're changing the shape of the, you're drilling a hole through a historical, you know, okay. you, you can't just drill a hole through the building. It's just like putting a door on the building It has to have the same historical value to the, you know, you, you can't just, I, I know I could in my house, but that building, no. So that's why I'm, I'm making a recommendation that we go through the window and utilize the window and just crack it and put some sort of vent in there to get the airflow. It'll help with the, the mold uh, and keep it down. That's it. No, nope, we have one more. Well, just one more thing oh, on the sorry. town hall. Ultimate abatement is scheduled to begin their work the week the 22nd or the 29th, so within the next two to three weeks. And from this point, once, once, the, once the committee is appointed, that's going to be turned over to the committee, so they'll, they'll be the ones dealing with the engineers and so forth. But it, it, right now, as Becky said, that's when it's scheduled to start. What is going to start, though? What the ultimate abatement, abatement through okay. the rest of that assessment on the tiles? Those are the ones that were stained. Mm -hmm. There's leaks in there. Yeah. yeah. For the 4,000. Did you know this? Correct. In the last correspondence, uh, August 2014 report from the Animal Control Officer, Sarah Perdell. Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to have to skip the application for a liquor license for at least 15 minutes. It has to be 715. Uh, the next item would would be the senior center director position. Uh, if you want to blame anybody, you can blame me on this one. I rescheduled it. We don't usually meet next Tuesday. I scheduled it for next Tuesday. It's a one, one article selectman's meeting. My reason for doing that is that Mr. Lavash is not here tonight. We usually don't appoint unless it's a full board for some that type of a position. So I canceled it for tonight and it's on for our next excuse me, next Tuesday at 6.30. I believe so, yes. And it's an open meeting, but it's done only so we'll have a full board, so it'll be a complete vote on who gets it. Uh, next item is the Town Hall Remediation Committee. What have we got, Becky? Are we in your folders? Okay. 
voting for two participants from the Friends of the Town Hall mm -hmm. Committee, uh, two participants from the general population, and uh, one person to, from the Board of Selectmen. All right, let me ask this. Did the committee meet or anything to decide? And who, give us the two names. Did they, didn't she send them to you? I have it. I just wanted to make sure it's from the town, from the reading meeting, from the committee, town hall committee. We have Arlene Norman yeah. and well, what's the other one from your committee? Yeah, Madeline. That's from your committee. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Madeline. So we have a request for. To name Arlene Norman and Madeline Batosik uh, to the Town Hall Remediation Committee. Is there a motion? I will make a motion that we appoint Madeline Batosik and Arlene Norman to the Remediation Committee. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll, there'll be a slip, you know, can come in and get it from Becky or the Selectman's office and get sworn in. Now, we also have. <coughs> We also have, at this stage, we have a letter from John Mooney that wants to be appointed as a member as a member of, at large, and we have a letter from Brian Corvo who wants to be appointed as a member for, at large. <coughs> um, I'm not sure Mr. Mooney. Um, okay. Mr. Mooney is here. Mr. Mooney can I ask you a question. Yep. Why do you want to be on the board? Um, basically because I've lived in this town my whole life and I think it would be a shame to let the town hall go to pot and I have a vested interest in the town hall. I have played in that town hall as, as a child and I would like to see it refurbished and go back to its, to its glory. Any no, I know that he is. Uh, he does painting and papering and general handyman type of stuff. Well, for the most part, I've been on many, many uh, construction projects. I know how. Uh, in this case, the roof needs to be addressed, and I know the working of a roofing project from start to finish. And I think I would be an asset to this project. I have no problem. Uh, I'd like to make a recommendation that Mr. Mooney be appointed to the, sorry, the Remediation Committee for the Town Hall. Yes. Now, that was a motion, I take it. That was a motion, yes. I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. You got it. I have to come in and see the Board of Selectmen's office. They'll give you a appointment certificate and get sworn in by the town clerk. Make sure you get sworn in. Okay, and when will I do that? Tomorrow or next yeah, You can see him tomorrow. Okay. So we have two positions open, one for one for a member, general member from the public, and we have another one from the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Bash did say he wanted to be put on that. Here, I'll make a motion that Mr. Bash be appointed to the uh, I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Now, we have one opening. I don't want to get into specifics or anything. We have to check out one thing on um, without getting into we're not going to make that one other appointment until we check into something i i can't that's all i can say at this time mm -hmm. so we have one open spot at this point in time until we do a little more research on this all right we have the c 2014 cdbg grant standard contract and i'll entertain a motion for me to sign it I will make a motion that we assign the standard contract for the CBG FY14 grant. I, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't. I think it's already signed. Probably. Did I 
yes, I am. Oh, oh, I can't do that. I did that in front of the town court. Treasury warrant and invoices. Treasury warrants. Okay. I will make a motion that we pay. We I make a motion that we approve Treasury warrant number eighteen in the amount of thirty-four thousand seven hundred forty-five dollars and six cents, and warrant number nineteen in the amount of four hundred. Excuse me, forty-nine thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars and ninety-two cents. I will second that. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will make a motion that we. Approve warrant number 20 in the amount of $36,481.86 and warrant number 21 in the amount of $181,635.31. I will second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll go to minutes. Minutes, yes. From the meeting from August 26, 2014. I will second. Any corrections, additions, or discussion? We'll that earlier. We're all set. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, close enough. Let's go to the application for <coughs> Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 138, Subsection 15, Wine and Malt Beverage Liquor License. For P and B Wicked Bank DBA Traskin Village Market. Now, just I'd like really not to go through this whole thing again, so bear with me for a second. We the that Traskis came in already, or or P and B Wicked came in, and they had to change the manager because there's a new law in the state of Massachusetts. So this is really something the board has already approved. So I'm not going to go into a big, long discussion about it. I'm just going to ask if anybody has anything to say about the license itself. This is the branch of beer and wine at the old Traskas Village Market for P&B Liquors, and it's really the same application, different, different person. If there's none, I will close the meeting, and I'll ask for a motion. Uh, we'll make a motion that we approve the license for Trask's Village Mart, Village Mart, do I need to name the... the as written. As, as, written. as written. Yeah. And just so you know also, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, the new notifications went out to the newspaper, all the abutters were notified, and nobody could have any opposition. Okay. So it's as written. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You got your license. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was all nervous so for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <coughs> we have uh, other business. Yep. Chapter 90. We'll replace recycling Cross Road. I'm not even sure what this is in regards to. Well, it's a chapter 90. It's just a chapter assigned. 90 fund. Why don't you explain a little bit, Tom? Ah, uh, yes. Well, just as far as the process or? Basically what you want to do, not the process itself. But. Um, looking to do a cold in place recycling process on Crouch Road. I got notification from the contractor that awarded the bid stating that a opening came up in the schedule. Uh, 
made a phone call to DOT district, made a phone call to you to make sure everything was a go. And they will be here Thursday to resurface Crouch Road. <coughs> Now, this is funds that we get from the state? Right, these are all the chapter 90 funds that we get from the state. As of right now, there's approximately $476,000 in that fund. Uh, we'll continue to do this portion of Crouch Road, as well as a portion of Route 19 from the Mass Pike to pole number 109, which is just south of Little Rest Road for this construction season before the snow flies. Okay, that's all at Crouch Road? Correct. And when they went, they want to start. They'll be here Thursday. Yes, they okay. staged equipment today. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we sign the highway department's chapter. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. Chapter ninety. Chapter ninety environmental. Chapter ninety. Environmental punch list and project right. request. I will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Welcome, sir. You're welcome. Temporary occupancy, occupancy agreement. Sign up the Mass DOT. This is just for the, uh, <coughs> the Mass DOT project. David, as the chair, has to sign. Surfacing the intersection improvements, Route 60 rooms. This is the same. This is just the downtown reconstruction. Okay. We'll make a motion to yeah, sign. Just to sign the temporary occupancy agreement. I will make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a request from the Lawrence Veteran Council to appoint Richard Jolinas. To the council to fill a vacancy left by Mr. Hathaway. Needs approval or motion. <clears throat> I would be in favor of making this appointment. I know that uh, Mr. Hathaway, I'm sorry Mr. Hathaway can't, couldn't stay on it, but uh, I know that he was a valued member and I think Mr. Delinas would also be. I, can't, I don't want to make a motion. I can't do that. Well, I will make a motion that we appoint Richard Jolinas <coughs> to the Veterans Council. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, first David. Thank you. She's uh, here tonight. Hello. She's looking into uh, open up Deborah's Country, Deborah's Country Kitchen, Deborah's Kitchen. Kitchen uh, with a former KGAT source. Mm -hmm. So uh, she just needs the uh, CV license signed by the board. Now, while you're standing here, we always give the, any new business coming into town a chance to, if they want to say anything about their business as far as, far as hours or anything else goes, so we'll offer you the same opportunity. Thank you. We'll be open seven days a week. Monday through Friday will be open at 6 to 1, and Saturday and Sunday will be open 7 to noon. It's all homemade cooking that I make there. Mm -hmm. And when are you opening? Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, wow. Welcome to town. Yeah. Thank but, you. Go ahead, Sue. I would just like to say, as part of the survey, this was one of the requests of the townspeople that responded to the survey was they wanted a restaurant. So I hope those people that wanted the restaurant right. frequent <laughs> Depp's um, Cafe. Um, also, I mean, a little bit of your background. This is new for you. You're no, in Brookfield and Leicester. Yeah, I had, so. a, I had a restaurant in North Brookfield for the last five months. And previous to that, 2001 to 2008, I was in Rochdale. Uh, I had my own restaurant. And uh, I worked at Carl's Diner years back. Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'll entertain a motion. I will make a motion that we sign the common figure license for Deb's Country Kitchen. Fort Milton, Fort Milton. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, anything else to come before the board? The only thing that I have is um, I've been working with Matt Brown from Greenwood Industries on the, um, you know, the Frenzy Town Hall aspect mm -hmm. of the, the, um, the roof and the warranty that's about to expire. Uh, Steve Giro went out on last Friday the 5th and he did some repairs on the flashing. Um, there was a deteriorated pipe flash on the flat roof and he did repair that. He said everything else looked good, so I don't know, but he said if there's any problems, they will come out and fix them. So we'll have to wait for some rain. Very good. It's 15 years though. So if rain comes on year 16, it's our problem. Yeah, problem. You know, so he did some minor repairs, mm -hmm. says everything looks good, mm -hmm. according to them. Okay. Did you get that in writing? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Uh, and, it, and it has been noted, so it, it's in writing, um, which is a good thing that they came out, you know, while we're still within the 15 years. Anything else? I have nothing other than to say we are, if anybody's interested in that appointment for the senior center director, remember 6.30 next Tuesday, it's an open meeting, anybody can come. Uh, strictly, we held it for one week only because Mr. Lavash wasn't available. Okay, I, I wanted to add that is next week's meeting. Um, I will have to leave at 7:15. I've been invited to the Warren uh, board meeting, the Warren Library meeting. Uh, they expressed uh, they sent me an invitation to their meeting about three weeks ago, and I uh, said I would attend. So I just am hoping that I can we can get our one ag one agenda item uh, wrapped up pretty quickly next Tuesday, so that I can make sure that I participate in, in the meeting. I confirmed. So I will be attending that meeting in Warren, in the library. That's it. Do you have a um, firm date and time for the department head meetings? I wanted to ask you. Yes, department head meetings. Oh, God. I think it's the, the 23rd. It was the 23rd. We're going to have our first department head meeting. It's a Tuesday. It'll be 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, our topic to start, I can, I can share that with the public. We're going to be going over our hiring policy. Um, basically a checklist everybody will get a packet as to how we're going to hire employees how we post and what we what we need to do to complete the proper way of hiring an employee and, and how we bring an employee in and in the last 15 to 20 minutes it's going to be an open discussion with the department heads and the direction of the town um, and, and where we're moving and what their thoughts are and, and working together as, as, as a group that's how I'm planning the last 15 minutes of this meeting is to see where we are um, and, and to open up these doors get everybody together and let's brainstorm because uh, everybody individually around here, when I speak to them, has some great ideas, some kind of different ideas and some great ideas. Well, let's bring them all together and let's brainstorm. They all have a general interest. They work for the residents, okay, and, some, and a lot of them are residents. So it's important that, you know, not only do the residents bring their concerns to us and, and to the townspeople and the different departments, but that I hear from the departments on what their concerns are. And what can I do to help facilitate their jobs and make them a little bit easier? bring things together as a whole. Uh, I think this is gonna be an important part of the department head meetings monthly is, is having that 15 to 20 minutes of open discussion and, and, and airing some, you know, what, what concerns do you have? What's bothering you? You know, what can we do to make your office work better? How do we facilitate things between, let's say, the treasurer and the accountant or whoever it might be? You know, it's an important thing to, to open up those lines of communication. Uh, but we will, be talk, we will be tackling policies and procedures a lot the first few months. Just in my short time being here, we've hired people different. <laughs> if there's no rhyme or reason how we do some, some of these things and, and some documentation is missing, and so we want to make sure that we're on a standardized form as to how we're doing these things. Standard practice instructions. Yeah, pretty much. Before we adjourn, I only have one other thing. We, we're going to have a town meeting coming up in the next month or two. We have. We, have we asked people to submit any articles <coughs> for that town meeting yet? The deadline's the 18th. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And with, with backup, you know. Explain, explanation of why. Correct. I know the board has roughly two or three articles that we put on. Mm -hmm. Can you address one of them? Sure. You want me to or you to? Oh, uh, well, the, the new one? Oh, I'm glad you said that. I forgot. We want to address that. We had an article passed about two or three years ago at an annual town meeting, I think, that appropriated two $2,500 for a, to, to put by chairs and to set up a computer room, computer slash, con actually it was a conference slash data room. We looked at it and we looked at what it was going to cost us to, to actually try to get it that. The computers we had were pretty old, we got them for nothing, 
didn't cost us anything to do that, but they're very old. Um, then we looked at what it was going to cost us to try to set that room up, and we kind of came to the conclusion that it wasn't worth it. It was going to cost too much money to do it. We still have roughly $2,500 left in the <coughs> account. And, what, and it's again, it's set up for a conference, and the money could be spent for a conference or a data room. Uh, what the board was considering is, is we sit in those chairs that you sit in out there too, okay? And we know they're not very good. Uh, we're considering at this point to take that $2,500 and to buy all new chairs for this room. That would be a lot more comfortable. And uh, I talked to Madeline about it, and she was a little uncomfortable with it because she said, that at least the townspeople should know. We could go to town meeting to do that, but we kind of would like to do it as soon as we possibly can to get these chairs out and to, and to get new ones. So that's what we're considering doing. Haven't decided if we're gonna do that or not yet, but that's what we're considering. Um, to go into the other articles we have, uh, I think the board has two other articles that I remember and I want everybody to know it. Um, we had one cruiser that flunked inspection so far, and we had one cruiser that there's no lights on the dash that hasn't flunked yet because we haven't got it inspected yet. So I asked the chief of police to bring the cruisers over to a Ford dealership and to get a written report as to what's wrong with them, what it'll cost to fix and so forth. And if it comes back that we think we think we need at least one new cruiser anyway. So we're, we're going to be putting an article on the next special town meeting for a cruiser and be very careful how we word it, but we might be looking for two instead, depending upon what, it, <coughs> what the reports come back as. Right, right now, I'm sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Right now we're looking to get inline cars. You know, I, I wanna make sure that new cruisers are here to serve and protect our town. You know, personal vehicles, they're meant to be here to do the duties that they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. and. And, and, and serve the people here. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm out of it personally that those vehicles are used as inline cars mm -hmm. uh, and in service in the public here. Um, and I know that there was an issue also with the expedition. There's an issue with the expedition as far as rust and stuff goes, but again, we want to get written reports from a, from a Ford dealer before we do anything. And we've asked to, the chief to do that. Right. That's the second out of the last article. Uh, and I don't know how many people are aware of this, there is an ongoing problem at the community, Warren Community Elementary School right now. The playscape and stuff that they use for the kindergarten and so forth and so on, about, there's a large portion of it that can't be used. Um, they've been trying to collect funds in order to buy a new, to, to, fix the, to fix the playscape up. I think they collected an appreciable amount of money, but nowhere close to fix it. And I think the board is going to put an article on to see if the people would go along with, with doing that for the, fix the playscape up. That was the only article we have right now. But Peggy, you probably know more about the playscape than I do. No, I, actually, I don't. Okay, I know that I know that they've been trying to collect money. I, I think, off the top of my head, I think they collected about twenty thousand dollars already to try to, to try to fix it. I, they've been collecting money for, you know, because they have upgraded already um, mm -hmm. a few years ago. They have very few things out there. I know when my grandson was in kindergarten, he he was just thrilled if he could ride on a swing every day because mm -hmm. there was only four swings for all those kids. You got, you know, mm -hmm. 90 kids out there and four swings. Yeah. So It's my understanding that construction down there now will leave a lot to be desired in it. Is some things they won't be I can't use right. so we know that they've been collecting for quite a while two or three years now we know they got about twenty thousand dollars and we're just going to see what we can do but I'm going to tell you half the reasoning okay half the reasoning being that as of right now we're supposed to get 90 percent reimbursement from for school transportation regional school transportation mm -hmm. that would amount to about hundred and sixty five thousand dollars I also think that we're going to get about that was from that was from the, the fiscal year for next for to the, the next one as of July 1st. I also understand that there's about 48,000 we're going to get back from the last fiscal year, so that would be enough to about 200 and some odd thousand, which 
means we wouldn't be adding anything to the to the tax rate or anything. It would be using money that's been appropriated, but we'll appropriate it for something else instead and still have money left over. That's one of the reasons we're thinking of doing it at this time. Just so everybody understands. There is some funds coming back. I mean, those aren't exact figures. Uh, there will be some money coming back. I, I don't think we have the exact numbers on those, but there is some, you know, and that's how we were thinking of repurposing the money, um, uh, helping out schools a little bit, and then maybe looking at the, the cruisers or, you know, we do need to do something with them. Um, you know, public safety is, is key. Uh, and I know the history there. Uh, chief has asked and asked and asked. And, you know, I don't have a problem with the town coming forward and saying they want stipulations on how the cars are, are used and the purpose, I, you know, but we need them. We need cars. You know, we can't we can't we can't afford to replace three four cars one year and then wait three or four years. We've got to get into a rotation at some point at some at some point so that we're not having you know absorbed as much of a hit at once. Um, so I'm hoping that we can move forward with that and, and start to get them into a rotation and make sure that we're decommissioning cars we don't need and we have completely you know the fleet that we need. We don't have too many. We don't you know but we have what will suffice and, and do the job. Well, I'm going to create an account for every year, X amount is put aside for a new cruiser every year. It would be nice if we had a capital. Uh, no, we do. We did. We do. We did. We have an account that we, we haven't put any money, I don't think we put any money into it last year, but there's, I'm going to guess about, what, $80,000 in that right now? Well, some of it we spent for trucks. That's true. But we have, we put an account, which the idea was to do exactly what you're saying. Right. Okay, to put money aside every every year so that we wouldn't have to go crazy and try to come up with a lot of money at one time. He says. That's still the intention. Okay, we do have some. We use it for trucks for, it, it's a general account, okay? You can use it for any, any capital purchase. Uh, Tom got a truck out of it. Um, so that's the intention. But you're gonna rob Peter to pay Paul. No, but we used to have, no, but we used to have separate <coughs> accounts. One maybe for the highway, one maybe for the fire, and one maybe for the police department. It was the idea to combine them so that the money would be there, could be used for any one of them that comes up as needed first. So you lose your accountability that way. If you have a separate account for each department, you know where the money is and where it goes. Now you can steal from a general account to buy something for anybody. No, and it's, no. All, it's all stabilization. It takes a, a town vote to right. take it out. Yeah, we can't take it out unless but the people if vote a truck, for it. If, if, we earmark fifty thousand dollars for a truck, and it comes in at fifty thousand and five dollars. Then we can't buy the truck. So if you put it all in one account, that's called just equipment funding. Then if it comes at fifty thousand and five dollars, you can do that. But it still has to go to town meeting. It has to, to go to town meeting. It's an town meeting still has to get, even the money even if the money's there, and it's not a new appropriation. Town meeting still has to give us the right to spend it. So it's a double vote act. So you vote once to put the money in. And then you vote another time to take the money out. Do you put enough money into this account to buy three vehicles every year? Probably not. No. no. But those are the habits that we want to start to bring back. We we want to start practicing that. But times have been so tough. We've had to use those funds for other things. You know, Pretty our aid is, is less, and, and the cost are rising. So it's you know we're we're taking the money to use it for other things, and you know tax rates a big issue right now. Ultimately, that's what we want is to have that. And to have that practice so that we you know can go to the town floor and say hey we're going to take this money from here we're going to buy a new truck how do you establish that we put money we try to put money aside every year when we have money enough money to do it right. we used to put a little money in every year okay but we haven't really bought any we haven't bought any vehicles for the police department we bought some for highway we've and been so trying forth. to buy for police excuse me i said we've been trying to buy for the police department yeah it's but, but we've been denied if we would have taken some other money out we would have put more money back in but it was really the treasurer's idea, I think, to try to make it into one account. Right. Initially, I had set it up as an ambulance stabilization account because you're allowed by code to have a earmark stabilization account for a capital purpose. So I started it when I started capital planning as an ambulance stabilization, put it away $20,000 for seven years for the $140,000 ambulance. It's still the intention to make to, build, to use that account and build it up, and we still want the people to make the decision. We can spend it. That's not. That's going to happen. It's not going to be any other way. I have no problem with that. Yeah. If you need four, three vehicles a year. Yep. Each one's forty grand. You need one hundred twenty grand each year. Well, mm -hmm. You don't have it. Our schedule really would be the biggest schedule we have is for the police department. It used to be 
every other year we bought a vehicle. Okay, so we didn't want to have to buy two at any given time, and we still don't. We may need two now, but the intention still would be to put money aside for one at the, for in one year, keep the second vehicle until the second year, and didn't just rotate buying up and updating the police once a year. That's the way it used, it used to be every other year for it replace a vehicle. And skip a year. Because they're three year rotation. Depending on the vehicle. What? Depending on the vehicle. Oh, yeah. It used, I mean, the idea was to ne never never open yourself up to have to buy two two vehicles a year unless you had to. The, the capital planning committee, which meets, we're going to meet at the end of the month. <clears throat> the capital planning committee, anybody that wants to buy any type of vehicle or anything like that, has or anything, any capital expense, has to put a request into capital planning. Capital planning meets, and those requests have to be in by September. Capital planning then meets and makes the decision, what can we do this year, okay? And what's the priority? So they take all of everything that's needed and look at priorities across the whole town. So maybe one year it would be a truck for Tom, maybe the next year it would be a, a police cruiser and so forth. But you try to make it so it's every other year on a police and the capital planning committee makes the recommendation to the board and to the townspeople what they what they agree should be bought this year. So having these department head meetings every month should give you a better handle on where you're going. We will know more. Like I said, the, the capital planning committee basically meets when it's when we'll, we'll meet in September and we every month now until town meeting. Okay? Because we want to know we want people to come in, explain what they need. Okay. Jimmy Jimmy's on the capital planning. Okay, they have to, Jimmy Court it, right? Okay, uh, they have to come in and explain what they want and justify it. You don't justify it to one person, you've got to justify it to various different departments and so forth in order to get the capital planning to say yes to it. That's exactly what we're trying to do, is you're trying to not to have any great big expense in any given year. That's the goal. That's where we want to get to. Uh, we want to get back to that practice. Uh, but it, but it's tough, you know. Aid is, is being cut. It's, it's not easy, you know. Finance works hard, you know, trying to crunch the numbers, and it's not easy. But that's ultimately where we want to be. Uh, so where it's an easier decision on the town floor. Thank you. And like I said, any, anything that gets spent, even if there, even if there's an account for it already, it still has to go to town people to vote. We can't even if the money's set aside. It might even be set aside to buy a new police cruiser. Money is in there. But you have to go to you have to go to town meeting to take the money out, right? Which has posed the problem in the last couple of meetings. Well, it's a good idea because the money is there. Now the problem is, it takes two thirds vote to get it. Once it, it's it's a harder harder to take money out of that account, okay? Than it is in other aspects of it. If you if you were to raise and appropriate it, it's majority vote. Continuing point where else you take it, it's a two-thirds vote. But we put the money aside so it would be there. And we also rely on it on the treasurer because some of the times we'll say that we have money in there to do it, but it would be easier to <coughs> uh, to bond it over a certain period of time and keep the money, depending upon what it would cost us to bond it. Okay. <coughs> Now, we've been very lucky, and I say that, we've been very, very lucky over the last five or six years that the money that we, can, that we bond for comes very close to just what we, what we get for interest and so forth. And a while ago, we used to get more, we used to get more money. Like, if we leave the money in the, in the, in the accounts we have, you know, let's say we have 1.3 million in there, we get the balance on that. And what used to be, we almost made enough money to buy buy a car just on the interest, and that's what we tried to do. For a long time. So, if you have any questions, fine. You can you can get a hold of me or whatever. And again, we're making that appointment for the senior center director next Tuesday at six thirty. It's an open meeting. Everybody's welcome to come. It will be over by seven o'clock. I guarantee you, it will not go longer than that. There's other meetings we have to get to. Other than that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry, glad you said that. Our next meeting is next Tuesday, and is another, the regular meeting is the Tuesday after.
two weeks from tonight. So two weeks from tonight, which will be the 23rd, we'll be meeting on a regular meeting. Next Tuesday, we're meeting just for that one item. The 23rd is going to be 7, though. Right. 23rd will be 7. Next, next Tuesday is at 6.30. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all Thank for you. coming.